On the 23rd of October, 1775, Samuel Osgood, who had led a company of Minutemen at the Battle of Lexington and Concord, wrote a letter to John Adams. Within the letter, he informed the Massachusetts statesmen on the progress of a secret new underwater weapon that the colonists planned to use against the British. Osgood wrote, The famous Waters machine from Connecticut is every day expected in camp. It must unavoidably be a clumsy business, as its weight is about a ton. I wish it might succeed, and the ships be blown up beyond the attraction of the earth, for it is the only way or chance they have of reaching St. Peter's Gate. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe to the Point of the Spear channel. And let us know in the comments, what other history topics you'd like to hear about. Osgood had reason for optimism. Nicknamed the Turtle, the contraption's designers David Bushnell and Isaac Doolittle, a former clockmaker, were pioneers in cutting-edge military technology of the day, and both Yale graduates. Bushnell had successfully demonstrated that gunpowder could be ignited and exploded underwater, and he used this knowledge to design underwater mines and torpedoes. The idea behind the turtle was not that it would directly attack an enemy vessel, but rather that American maritimers could use it to get close enough to a British ship, undetected, to attach an explosive mine to the hull. The mine, containing around 150 pounds of black powder, would then be detonated with a timer fuse. Successful tests were conducted in the Connecticut River with Bushnell's brother Ezra at the controls in the single-man vessel. The turtle was propelled through the water by means of a treadle-driven propeller and hand-operated crank, which required considerable effort to use, meaning whoever was piloting the craft had to be physically fit. Visibility came via porthole windows near the top of the craft and in the hatch on top, through which the pilot would enter and exit the craft. This hatch was also the only way that air could get into the turtle. Because of its limited air capacity, traveling underwater would only be done when absolutely necessary. For most of the craft's journey, it was intended that it travel through the water with the hatch just protruding from the surface. Because of being exposed on the water's surface, only night missions were intended. To overcome the problem of being able to navigate through dark waters at night, ingeniously bioluminescent foxfire was attached to the needles of Turtle's compass and other instruments, so that they could be read in the dark. After the successful tests in the Connecticut River, the turtle was transported to Long Island Sound in early 1776 in preparation for active use. Ezra, however, fell ill, and a new pilot had to be found and trained, which set the project back. Three candidates were found, and after having moved turtle to the Hudson River for training, the craft was then towed to New York Harbor to attack the British fleet. The British had abandoned Boston in March, 1776, and high command set its sights on New York. Orders were sent to several fleets to converge at New York that summer. On the 12th of July, 1776, Admiral Howe's fleet arrived at Staten Island. This fleet and other ships preceding them carried the largest British expeditionary force ever assembled. Along with other British ships in the waters of North America, it was also the biggest amphibious assault force in European history. Approximately 48 ships and over 10,000 British troops, including General Sir William Howe, the general in charge of New York. The sight was so breathtaking that residents reported that the ship's masts looked like a forest of pines spread across the bay. Wading into this forest would be America's first covert underwater weapon, aiming to wreak havoc and destruction. On the 6th of September, 1776, Turtle's first mission got underway. Piloted by Sergeant Ezra Lee, Turtle targeted HMS Eagle, the Royal Navy's flagship in New York Harbor, which was moored off Governor's Island. Unfortunately for Lee, the currents were much stronger than anticipated, and the darkness, even with bioluminescent controls, made it difficult to navigate. Lee planned to attach a mine to the underside of the Eagle by use of a hand auger. However, once Lee was under the ship, his drill hit metal, not wood, as planned, and the explosive would not attach. As dawn approached, he abandoned the mission, and although the turtle had worked as designed, the mission failed. The turtle was employed in two more missions, both of which also failed, and subsequently the prototype submersible was lost during the Battle of Fort Lee, when the British sank the sloop transporting it. It was America's first underwater weapon of war, 
and truly point-of-the-spear military technology for the time. The turtle, however, lives on. A fully functional replica was constructed from Bushnell's designs in the 1970s and is currently on display at the Connecticut River Foundation, although they probably won't let you take it out for a spin. What do you think about this early submarine? Would you have volunteered to be the pilot? Let us know in the comments below and check out other Point of the Spear videos and click that subscribe button and notification bell. You don't want to miss our next video.